We've got the grand finale, Mike Cope from the Sense Foundation, about the rise of rejuvenation biotechnology. Thanks, Ben. <laughs> Thank you. I am uh, Mike Cope, and it has been my distinct privilege, honor, really, to be president of Sense Foundation these first two and a half years of our existence. I want to thank all of you for coming to this conference, and if you will be a charitable audience, I will be a merciful and quick last speaker. Uh, look, I know you all had a great week, an energetic week, an interesting week. I hope you all feel it was a productive week. I also know that 12-hour sessions for three and a half days uh, is a lot to ask. If you will give me a few minutes to talk about SENS Foundation and about rejuvenation biotechnology, we'll get this done in 15 minutes. I won't give you any data slides at all. And uh, we'll get you off to dinner and a nice day of punting. So there's a reason we're here as a foundation. And we call it advancing rejuvenation biotechnology. To get there requires an expansive view of regenerative medicine beyond what you would commonly think of, stem cell therapy and organ repair and replacement, and into the repair of living cells in the body and the repair or removal of extracellular material in the body. Now, regenerative medicine is getting pretty big. It's popular and it's rather rich. There's hundreds of millions of dollars in the NIH in the US going into it. There's hundreds of millions of more coming from the Department of Defense, and that amount, again, from various state initiatives, and that's just United States government funding. And its cousin, or direct descendant, rather, reju rejuvenation biotechnology is a rather poor relative. There are a few initiatives, such as the beta amyloid work in clinical for Alzheimer's disease going on, but there's not much overall effort, and there's certainly nothing comprehensive right now. So that's why we're here. Uh, our core mission is to build an industry of rejuvenation biotechnology. And our vision is to follow through and actually accomplish conquering the diseases and disabilities of aging. But I think all of you know all that, so what I want to talk about for a few minutes is the philosophy, the core values, uh, which we have always thought would be so important for getting us there, uh, namely building credibility and maturity for this industry. So Aubrey described in Ending Aging uh, this triangular logjam for funding for this damage repair approach to geriatric medicine. Um, basically, the biogerontologists don't push this as a comprehensive disease that can be solved to the public. So the public don't recognize it and push that with government, so government in turn does not create the incentives to move the uh, research industry in that direction. And to disrupt it, he suggested we use philanthropy to fund the initial efforts in damage repair and um, also what he put as fame in the book, what I would say is sparking enough controversy, uh, uh, sparking uh, enough controversy to create or even force a dialogue on the subject. And, and that was very successful. Uh, created the MIT Challenge. It launched the Rejuvenation Research Journal. It opened significant debate, but the logjam hasn't fully been broken. <laughs> There may be still as little as $10 million in NIH funding, for example, annually going into this kind of intracellular and extracellular damage repair. And we can't even tell you for sure because it isn't really even counted as, as a separate category. So we move into a new business plan for the foundation itself to become a facilitator, to continue to wear down the negative feedback loop and replace it with a more positive one, pushing the networks of connections that are necessary to drive this as an industry. In other words, we sort of visualize ourselves as a switchboard. Uh, we'll initially connect the investors and the philanthropists to academia. We will engage industry in that as results start to come in, and all the while we're reaching out to the public directly. And that's what brings me back to our basic research focus and to my comment about the core values of credibility and maturity. 
Our base funding allows core research that allows early outreach and some demonstration of feasibility, and that promotes a little more giving, which we're experiencing now, which makes possible more strategic partnerships, uh, more concrete results, the engagement of the government, and onward and onward until the wheel begins to drive itself. Now, uh, remember, at this stage, it doesn't have to be a, about a robust mouse rejuvenation or a clinical profile for a life extension drug. We're just trying to build respect for a simple new paradigm, and it's one that I'm sure everyone in this audience, probably more than anywhere else in the world, already understands. And that's if you turn all the complex diseases and disabilities of aging, all the hundreds of them on their side, you'll see they're all connected by a very few types of underlying damage basically in late interventions, at least, for age-related disease. It's about a choice between chasing pathology or addressing damage. Um, as my eight-year-old taught me when he taught me how to play this game, you don't aim for the pig, Dad. You aim for the structure. If you chase the diseases, you only impact the diseases, right? And, and in fact, and with all the work we've done, we haven't, in fact, eradicated any major age-related disease. Target the underlying damage instead. <laughs> and you have at least the potential for a transformative and comprehensive result. <clears throat> but, <laughs> but you all know that. So the question is, how well are we doing in selling that vision, right? And, and I think we're seeing signs at this stage that we're doing very well indeed. Uh, so these are the areas of damage in the SENS proposal. Too many cells, too few cells, different mutation problems, cross-links, junk inside and outside of cells. Um, in 2009, we began uh, with a grant from Methuselah Foundation. Dave Goble, are you here? Dave in the back there. And the support of Peter Thiel. And by 2010, with a budget of about a million and a half, we had our Lysosense program running at Rice and in our research center. We had nuclear epimutation work going on, testing the boundaries of SENS at Einstein, and Im immunosenescence work going on at University of Arizona. 2011, a significant expansion of budget allowed us to take on uh, the mitochondrial mutation program in our own research center. And uh, we also added a collaboration in uh, death-resistant cells at. Buck University under the aegis of University of Alberta. But this is the slide I really want to show you. Through the end of this year and in 2012, we expect about a tripling of our original budget, and we're going to have relationships with top tier organizations in aging research and regenerative medicine. Uh, notably here, Buck Institute on Aging, uh, continuation of the work at Einstein, Stanford, the beginning of our glucosapane project right here at Cambridge starting next month, and the first of several programs at Wake Forest, this first one in thymus rejuvenation um, with John Jackson, and hopefully very quickly thereafter, extracellular matrix work as Shai presented on, and uh, got stem cell receding as Grasha presented on. And we will then have a significant research project going on in every category of sense. And for us, that's a really, really big threshold and a really big deal coming up this year. Um, as to that last mentioned collaboration, that, of course, is Tony Atala. He's the director of the Wake Forest Institute for Regenerative Medicine. <clears throat> Pardon me. I'm originally from Detroit. Henry Ford used to say about his River Rouge plant in Michigan that he could take trainloads of coal and ore in one side of the facility and spit out Model Ts on the other. Tony can take raw regenerative medicine scientists into the front door of his facility and put out pretty advanced regenerative med medicine therapy right out the back door. He's got his own clinical material uh, facility that works at CGMP conditions even. Um, <clears throat> and he's been on Oprah. <laughs> so he's our definition of mainstream. Um, this is Tony and Aubrey at TEDMED uh, very late last year. Uh, now, a picture of Tony and Aubrey on stage talking isn't that big a deal uh, by itself. Uh, they've had a professional relationship for many years. 
Um, but this isn't that. This is a picture of Tony and Aubrey announcing our intent to move forward on the first of our collaborations um, and getting Wake Forest and other uh, strategically aligned universities and institutes involved in our view of rejuvenation biotechnology. Um, this first being for the Thymus project, which we're now preparing to move forward. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that we've really got this wheel turning. We've got the right collaborations, and we've got a robust research center. We're making the mainstreaming of SENS very concrete now, and we're starting to move this from the stunning vision of one guy um, to a mature and accomplished organization. Uh, if you don't mind, then what I'd like to do to wrap it up is actually introduce everybody to the organization. I'll take questions at the dinner or at the party, um, but let's just get everybody on stage if we could. And I would like to start with Tanya Jones, our Director of Research Operations. <laughs> who it seems to me has sometimes has single-handedly built brick by brick our new research center. And now let's get everybody on stage if we pause for clapping with everybody. We're probably going to take on that. William Baines is running the glucosapane project at Cambridge. Guri Yogalingam is our uh, new director of our Lysosense program. Daniel Kimball was sometimes Lysosense uh, researcher, now our academic initiative coordinator. Max Pito and Lorenzo Albanello, or Lorenzo may not be here right now, in Lysosense research. Oki O'Connor and Gayathri Swaminathan, our mitochondrial mutation people in our research center. Jacques Mathieu, also in Lysosense at Rice University and also direct consultant to us. Sylvia Grafina from Einstein, our epimutations expert. Maria. And Tragies is our volunteer coordinator, but really what she's been doing for us, a, an enormous job of, is breaking down doors in Hollywood and getting celebrity spokespersons for us, which I hope you'll see on our website within a couple of months. Michael Ray is, of course, the co-author of Ending Aging, and he and Ben Zeely, ah, there he is. I forget he has short hair now, <laughs> uh, comprise the uh, chief science officer's team. And uh, I think I've got everybody but the co-founders now, have I? Uh, so Kevin Parrott was a board member at Methuselah and is a board member with us as well as a researcher. Uh, that continuity has really kept us moving. Sarah Marr has added sophistication to every facet of this organization, administration, finance, messaging, communication, and outreach. Yeah. Aubrey de Grey, uh, <laughs> the guy who keeps this all going and whose tireless energy makes this work. Not bad, not bad. You did that by heart. The only person you forgot was Sarah. Come on. Sarah Fazal, our intern. <laughs> I meant to call you. I didn't see you. <laughs> and all of us would like to thank all of you for participating in making Sense 5 such a success. Thank you. Questions for Mike? Let's wrap. Let's take them at the party. Yeah, that's good. At the party. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, Dana. Uh, everyone go at the back, Commander, please. Yeah, that's all it was meant to be.